This video will cover the basic interface that you will have with InDesign as you are working with documents. So the first thing I want to point out to you is the workspace I currently have set up. So if you go up to the top here, you'll see this little drop down menu. Mine currently says Essentials, but if I click on that, you'll see there are many different workspaces to choose from. So I think Essentials is a good one for you to start with, to learn with, but know that you have the ability to work with any of these and also any changes you make to the interface, you can then go in and save um, with your own name so that you can create your own custom workspace, which is what I usually do. As you'll see up here, I have one called Ron Space, but I'm gonna stick with Essentials. And uh, here we are, pretty much where we left off in the last video. So we have our four page file and uh, I'll review those pages again in a minute. But first I wanted to talk to you about the basic things around the edge here. Um, we will get more involved in each one of these tools and windows as we go through the videos uh, for InDesign. But I just wanna basically explain how these work. You'll notice that this is kind of a mix between what Illustrator looks like and what Photoshop looks like. And because you have learned both of those programs now, you should be very comfortable in InDesign. I've been teaching this stuff for quite a while, and I gotta say InDesign is probably the easiest program to learn and teach, not as steep of a learning curve. And part of that is because you can reuse a lot of the information you already have. So over here on the right, these are a bunch of windows all attached within this dock, and you've already seen the pages window. And like I said, I'll come back and cover these in more detail um, as we need, but you know how those work. Yes, dear. Over here is your tools panel or tools window. And I should note that Adobe now calls windows panels. And I have no problem with that term, but they've always been called windows before. So I continue to call them windows, primarily because as a teacher, if you wanna know where to find these windows, where do you go? Well, you go up to the window menu at the top and you can find any of those panels. <laughs> so anyway, don't ask, don't tell. But here are all the tools, and you will recognize the black arrow tool or the selection tool, the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool. And uh, you will notice that here is the type tool, here is the pen tool, uh, here is the magnifying tool, the eyedropper tool, the hand tool for moving around. So in other words, a whole lot of tools that you already know how to use. So that will be nice as you're going through this program. So I should mention at this point that InDesign is really all about dealing with multiple page documents. So unlike Illustrator, which is originally created to create illustrations, but now do very well with single page layouts, or Photoshop, which is meant to intensively deal with pixels and, and their modification, uh, InDesign really doesn't do anything but collect and place information. It's a layout application. So anytime you have a layout that is more than one page, um, then InDesign is usually going to be the tool. And specifically when I say more than one page, I mean pages that are connected to each other, facing pages. So if you just have a bunch of single pages, Illustrator, InDesign doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. But if you have facing pages, spreads, then InDesign is definitely the program you are going to want to use. Okay, so lastly up here at the top is the control window. And you saw this in Photoshop, and so you know what it is, is contextual. All of this will change dependent on what tool you have active and what you currently have selected in the document space. And so that's a great window. It's the uh, equivalent of the properties window in Illustrator. So last thing I wanna talk about here is uh, navigation. So how do you get around to the different pages? I don't know. We just saw a minute ago that I just scrolled by dragging the scroll bar here. And you'll see there's the back cover, there's the spread, pages two and three, and there is the front cover. Obviously, you can also scroll side to side with the bottom scroll bar. And uh, then don't forget that, you know, we'll come back to this later, but that you always have the ability to zoom in and out. Again, the keystrokes are the same as you've learned already, but you can use the menu if you wish. 
Okay, so another way to get around is to open up the pages window. And this is nice. You can just double click and you can go wherever you want to go. I'm gonna change my view back to fit spread in window. And you can easily click and move around from page to page. And so very simple to do that. Uh, a little less simple, but another option is down here at the bottom where you have a little page number and you can either drop this menu or you can type in a number. So this really isn't meaningful if you only have a few pages. It's much easier to, to scroll or click on the pages icon. But if you have a 150 page document, well then this might be an easier way to get to page 142. So that's it for now. See you in the next video.